Um, this is uh, the the video for the V500 Infinity ventilator, uh, and we'll be looking at its basic operation. So this vent uh, is basically comprises of two units. It's got a base unit and a screen. The power button is on the base unit. There's a little door on the left side which you can open and switch it on in there. Uh, and then you've got a screen um, which is actually quite large. It's a touch screen uh, and it's the bit where we have all, uh, well it's the business area so it's, it's where all the action happens. So now we can switch to this mode. So this is our little simulator which I will be using to guide you through the rest of the operation of this vent. So as you can see here there's a nice little on switch so after it's connected up to power oxygen and air and you've switched it on you can then switch on the ventilator here it makes that reassuring beep and you get that flash screen you've got lights to show you it's plugged in and light to show you that the battery is full and you switch it on you can tell that it's in standby mode and you've got standby up here and you can tell that there's a current patient and the current patient is a child because you've got a little child picture there which is similar to the paediatric picture there and you can also tell that um, the battery is fully charged now if we come back down here the other important things are this so this rotary knob can be depressed so anytime we want to select values one we use the we select what we want to change we use this rotary knob to get the value that we want then we depress the knob to confirm that change so it's a touch turn confirm ventilator and everything needs to be confirmed with the vent so now we want to go ahead uh, and ventilate a patient so for the sake of this demonstration we'll try and ventilate a 10 kilo child so over here we would pick new paediatric patient so I've touched it and then it lights up then I confirm it yeah <laughs> I confirmed it twice so it started ventilating immediately that wasn't what I wanted to do so we go back to the standby screen so we can see what's happening so at the moment the patient is being ventilated and you can see that's what's happening there um, I could easily stop that by pushing standby again and then confirming once you do that, the ventilator will alarm and it's a red alarm because you can see it's red there and it flashes red at the top. I would need to reset that alarm and confirm it here and then that alarm would then go away and it would be nice and silenced. Right, that wasn't what I was intending to do, but here we are. Um, so if you press the, 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 the new patient button, you then come to this standby screen. And this standby screen has several tabs along the front uh, and it's also got this left side uh, sorry right sided panel of soft buttons some of which are of interest to us and i shall go through them all in time so across the top there are five tabs of those tabs these first two are of importance to you the other three are all about getting the ventilator set up so this, the vents are usually set up by our ventilator technician or by some of our senior nurses. Uh, and by the time it comes to you, the vent would be fully set up, ready for you to start. So therefore, we would start at the beginning here. At the top, you've got these two buttons. Start obviously is to start ventilation. Its resting position would be this kind of like pale green kind of color. Um, and to start ventilation, you would press it, it would turn yellow, and you would confirm here. So I'm not looking to start now. Um, but if you don't confirm, what you'll find in a matter of seconds is it then reverts to its previous position. So it's gone back to pale green. So you press it, it turns yellow, you're supposed to confirm. If you don't confirm, it will revert back to the color that it was previously, and nothing has happened. So you've got pale green. Uh, means nothing's happening uh, and the color of action is the dark green so this shows you that this ventilator is currently in standby um, then you need to decide what sort of patient you want so we said we're going for a child of 10 kilos 
as you can see our ventilators are set up to ventilate adults uh, pediatrics and neonates and they have different weight categories so the neonatal weight category goes from 400 grams to 10 kilos the pediatric category goes from 5 kilos to 50 kilos and the adult category goes from 30 kilos to 137.5 kilos now these uh, categories you can see there's overlap between adult and ped and there's overlap between ped and neonate so depending on wh what sort of child uh, you've got you do have some flex or some choice in the system um, between adult and ped there's not much difference if you're putting the weight in but there's a difference between ped and neonate because if you pick neonate anytime you pick neonate you have to insert what we call a near flow sensor into the tubing uh, and the reason why is that the near flow sensor is actually a flow sensor which tells the ventilator uh, when the baby is attempting to take a breath um, for adults and children this flow is sensed actually once it's gone back to the expiratory limb back into the ventilator but because the volumes that the neonates generate is so small that sensor has to be placed close as close to the ET tube as possible so there's a sensor that needs to go on the end anytime you put the patient in neonatal mode the other difference uh, between them is that if you select neonates wait for it to sort itself out you have to put in the ideal body weight and you put that in here if you select child or adult you're expected to put the height in and as you put the height in the ideal body weight updates yeah so all ventilation is based on height in real life so all lung function is based on height not weight but everything we know about ventilation we index to body weight in pediatrics um, so therefore you then get this problem so in reality what happens is that if we think the ideal body weight of a child is 10 kilos we would adjust the height until we got the 10 kilo mark here so this is kind of like the tail wagging the dog and it's not the right way to do it but that's how it's done because when patients come into ITU quite often we don't know their weight we estimate it um, and on top of that we never know their height and you can't actually get an accurate height measurement um, once on intensive care it's actually very difficult to do so therefore we have that little kind of fudge thing so if I said I wanted the 10 kilo baby I know that 77 centimeters so is always height in centimeters equates to an ideal body weight of 10 kilos there you go 77 10 kilos let's just practice so this is what we do with the weight situation but the weight does need to be put in because if you put the weight in at the beginning the ventilating settings and the alarm limits are then set up in the background for a child of that weight if you don't put the weight in you you're not really getting anything much or you you would have forgot there's always some sort of number in there um, and you, you won't get the correct vent settings or the alarm limits to start so it's really important that you put it in right the next thing we have here is to decide do we want to ventilate this patient or are we looking to uh, deliver some high flow oxygen therapy um, so there is high flow oxygen uh, and it's very straightforward but that's not what we're looking to do today so it's high flow oxygen and what is set there is fi2 21 percent at 25 liters per minute today we'll be examining ventilation but it's nice to know that that functionality is there so before we actually press the start button you actually know what settings you have so the settings we have is we've got a patient uh, who's a pediatric patient who's on uh, volume control assist control he's been ventilated via an ET tube autoflow is off and I'll discuss autoflow 
uh, a little later or perhaps in a different video um, FO2 is set to 21% and there's an eye time of 0.69 we've got a rest rate of 29 and the tidal volume is 50 mils so this we already know now it might be we don't want to ventilate in that mode or with these settings and what we would then need to do there is come to these ventilator settings and change them so we've got volume control assist control so you may not know what that is and if that's the case there's a little arrow here that will tell you so you select a mode press the arrow and it tells you exactly um, what that mode is and what it does so you have that wonderful uh, functionality which you may or may not find helpful but what you'll find is the modes are actually put across the top here um, and the settings are down here so the modes I want to start this patient on in is BiPAP. So I press the BiPAP tab and I then accept. Now it might be that the mode you want to set isn't along the top here, isn't one of these tabs. So what you would then need to do is go to the other modes tab and see what else there is. So there's quite a few extra modes. There's nine extra modes in there, uh, including the, uh, uh, in addition to the five that you can see on top. But for today, I think we're sticking with BiPAP. Uh, and now you can now examine the settings. So you've got settings all around here. Now, these are the settings the ventilator feels the patient should have based on the weight you put in. What you'll notice are the, there are these little black triangles and they will remain in place all the time, irrespective of the settings. So let's say I set this patient uh, a pressure of 20 so I'll increase it there to 22 confirm that black triangle is there so what that tells me when I look at the vent is we set it at 22 but the ventilator suggests that this should 15 is what should be normal and this is the point that should be normal for this child and then you'll have that on each of the dials um, so it's a nice little uh, it's a nice little uh, thing to remind you as to where you are in terms of ventilating this baby um, and it's something that you may or not find useful so these settings we see here are basic settings there are some additional settings which we'll discuss in future videos so there's things like apnea ventilation which looks like this there's the flow trigger which is very important and this of all of them this is the one thing that you should check anytime you put a patient on the ventilator there's also a thing called a side breath whether or not we want to use this side breath in this patient's ventilation and there's a thing called automatic tube compensation and like i said we'll discuss these uh, in future videos because it's too much to put all that information in here now what you get here can differ depending on the type of ventilation you're looking now if you put the patient in a volume mode what you'll find is that some of it changes so what you have here now is you have a thing called auto flow um, and that's also very important, but it will only ever appear in a volume mode. Um, so we use this a lot. So we will we'll tell you about it later, but you do need to know additional settings. They're in here, but they do change according to what style of ventilation um, you're giving. Right. So I shall now return to the start standby screen because there are some other buttons uh, we haven't examined yet. So. So we've looked at all these here. What we now need to do is go to the second tab that's of interest of, to us. So the second tab it decides, are you going to ventilate the patient conventionally or are we going to give this child non-invasive ventilation? So you can do either of those through this vent. So you can do the ET tube ventilation, non-invasive ventilation or high flow oxygen therapy. It would have been nicer if they put all these three on the same tab, um, probably on this side, rather than making us go and look for it in here. Um, but this is how this is set up. If you go to the V800, that's set up with all three on the standby tab. So that 
workflows kind of better and you're not yeah it stops you looking around for things um that you know might exist but not entirely sure where they are um so let's stick with ventilation today so we've got an et tube you tell them whether it's an et tube or tracheostomy tube and you tell them what size so we said we're going to try and do a 10 kilo um, child so we'll assume the et tube is a size four now there's this other interesting uh button here so it's enable p track calculation so you're also, you, if you switch this on what you're saying is you want the ventilator to attempt to calculate the pressure at the end of the trachea uh, and the usefulness of this is that it and it helps so if you calculate that figure in the first place then it's easier for the ventilator to get more accurate resistance and compliance data and as well it makes it easier for it to assess leakage compensation so as far as i'm concerned it should be on all the time um so this is what it should look like if we're ventilating a 10 kilo child so now we're almost ready to press the start button however there's another button over here um which uh, is of use to us so that's the alarms button so these are displaying the alarm limits so we've already seen what pressures we're going to be ventilating at uh, and those pressures will generate things that need to be measured so like minute volumes and tidal volumes and things like that uh, and they need to stay within a certain level so these are the maximum levels these are the minimum levels realistically the ones that you're really important are, are one the pressure alarm so this is the maximum pressure um, uh, the maximum pip that you'll be allowed to go up to and this is the maximum tidal volume before you then start to get alarms now we don't actually have end tidal on our vents but some uh, end so we have end, we do have end tidal it runs through the monitor doesn't run through the ventilators it can run through the ventilator and that's where you get uh, that little uh, that and that's where you set your end tidal uh, limits over here so it's not relevant for us but in some other places you might find them um, with that in use so once we've done all that and we're happy with that press this little cross here go back to our standby screen and we're ready to start ventilating so we've got this start buttons already nice and yellow that's gone off again because i was too slow um, it's nice and yellow press confirm now the ventilator has started ventilating so we're looking good so this is the face of a ventilator that is ventilating you can see it's still in volume control assist control i thought i'd put it in bipap so i'm not happy with that so there are three places uh, you can change the mode of ventilation this is the first if you click on the name up there you get the ventilator settings up i should close that again if you click on the vent settings you can get the ventilator settings up close it again and if you come oh, sorry accidentally press there and if you come down here to try and adjust something there we know no sorry there's a and you press on something you get another little arrow and then you can then change it there so i'm going back to bipap and confirm uh, and uh so these are the settings that I had previously. It's remembered them and retained them. All right. So we'll talk about these little things in the moment. Or, but we appear to have alarms. So based on these settings, close this. Two alarms have sprung up. One is a medium priority alarm, and the medium priority alarm will make this flash yellow at the top. And it means, especially with tidal volumes, it means your tidal volumes are too high. You either need to decide to do something to reduce the tidal volume. So in this case, it will be drop the pressure or increase the peep. Both of those would change the tidal volume or change the tidal volume alarm. And based on the clinical situation, you need to make your mind up and do one. And then as the tidal volume is high, we're not really surprised that the minute volume is also high so if you fix the tidal volume 
you might just fix the minute volume at the same time. Now, the difference with the minute volume is the minute volume alarm is a high priority alarm and therefore flashes red in here will flash red down here um, and you do need to do something about it. Um, so how do you do something about it? You go into the alarm limits and then you can see that it's the minute volume here is three is like three liters per minute and we'd set two. I think it's because we wanted a pressure of 22 so therefore a pressure of 22 will generate a much higher tidal volume that we would need to match sort of like here and then you confirm that where we go that's too slow well it confirmed it there and that alarm has gone off However, the tidal volume is still high. Um, and we said we wanted that tidal volume. Um, so therefore, we are going to try and change the tidal volume. So it's a bit of a lag. And we confirm there. And now the tidal volume alarm has also gone off. Now, if the alarms are getting on your nerves, where you cancel the alarms is this yellow button here and that will cancel the alarm um, for two minutes and you'll get a countdown in this screen up here but I'll, the other way to I'll, once you've cancelled something and fixed it there's also an alarm reset button and then you can press that and then and, and then accept uh, and then that will also get rid of any of the alarms that are in there so this is where the alarm limits are this one will show you if there are any alarms going off and you're not quite sure what's alarming because it's in a menu behind a menu, um, then uh, this is where you'll find the current alarm and then you'll know, well, hopefully you'll know where to go and find and cancel it. Um, and this here has the alarm history. So this will tell you all the alarms that have happened on this ventilator since we switched it on. There's another central repository for all this alarm history, plus all our ventilation changes, which also sits somewhere um, in the system setup. So you can go and find every, absolutely everything, every button press on this ventilator, should you need to do so. Right, so that's a look at the alarm. Um, we've already looked at the settings here. So now we should have a look at the display. So what's displayed when the ventilator goes on? Uh, is whatever you want displayed so as default what we have are the pressure versus time flow versus time and volume versus time um, kind of information uh, and, and these are very good to look at as soon as you put a patient on the ventilator they're the things that will give you the initial um, uh, uh, initial information on whether your patient's ventilating properly so you can see you set 22 on 5 if you look at the pressure waveform you can see it peaks at just over 20 and comes down to 5 so you're seeing that this patient is actually achieving the, the pressure that you're getting of the three waveforms this is the most important so this is the flow waveform and you can get all sorts of diagnostic information on how the patient's being ventilated from this flow waveform and we will be looking at that uh, in a bit more detail again in a later video and down here you have um, stuff that we've set and uh, well it's not we haven't set this this is stuff that you get what they say is the green stuff is what you set the blue stuff is what you get so we're getting blue from the green stuff that we've set down here um, so you can display anything in here so each of these things is customizable so if you click on the screen it will tell you that there's a single parameter in there and it's the mean airway pressure um, but it doesn't have to be it could be the plateau pressure or the pip so let's just call that pip and then you and then it flips back and now we've got pip there instead of mean airway pressure you don't have to have just one thing in there either I think you can get a couple so it's a single parameter where are we going yeah, single so you can put two parameters in there if you want and close and so there's another space in there for me to add something else should I want to do so so that's customizable these are also customizable 
So at the moment we've got in there a nice little waveform and it's volume, but it doesn't have to be. So if we had our CO2 in here, we could also put that in there if we wanted to actually display the end title if this machine did end title. So it's highly customizable in that way, but also in other ways. So this is a set of views and that's called view one, but you don't have to have view one. You could have view two, which shows things completely differently. So you've got some trends down here. Um, uh, and you've got some values as well as your waveforms all at the same time. So it depends on what you want to look at when, um, then you'll get all sorts of information. Now, in addition to this, if you don't see what you want, so you, you want to know, let's say there's a leak around the tube, where would you find that information? So you need to go to trends and data, um, uh, and you've got a, a tabular and graphical view. So this is kind of like a tabular view, but what we really want is to go and see the values themselves and see what current data that we have in here. Uh, it's not playing ball at the moment. I might do if I ask it what values we want. So if we go to values one, there you go. So it gives you all this information. So this is what your peep is, what your plateau pressure is. Um, this is what your low pressure is. This is what your mandatory respiratory rate is. Um, the no spontaneous breaths. Uh, and then you can go down to the next tab. So therefore you've got more information here. So this is your minute volume leak. This is your minute volume. So all that information is available. You just need to know to where to look for it. So there are all sorts of special procedures here. We'll discuss that in another video because it's um, quite complicated. Um, and these other buttons probably won't concern you that much. So you'll want the top two here. Um, and the rest are, is for the vent techs, uh, for some of our therapists uh, and, and, and also for some of our nurses. So this is a, a rapid run through uh, the V500 ventilator. If you want to turn it off, because the patient's either got better, extubated, you press the start standby button again. You click on standby, accept. It will then alarm. So then you can stop it making noise while you then reset the alarm and confirm and that will be the ventilator now back in standby um, to switch it off you switch it off here you're never required to switch it off because uh, well, it depends on the situation but you wouldn't be required to switch it off um, but if you did you'd press it it would ask you to confirm you say okay you then need to reconfirm uh, you get that wonderful splash screen you saw in the beginning this time in black and white and then it should switch itself off. There you go, like that. Right guys, so that's all I have for you today on this one. Um, and I think what I will do is try and find a way to show you how to get this resource. So this simulator program is online. And you can get it from the Draeger website, but it isn't clear where to absolutely where you'd go to look for it. And I will try and put a little sneaky additional video on so that I can show you how you can get a hold of it and play with it yourself. So, all right, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you on the next one.